I knew I would be that whistleblower who would be labelled a snitch. Labelled the person who was difficult, who was gaslit. Who was said, you just need to pipe down and go back in your box. But Rebecca Callum refused to get back in her box. A firearms officer who had ambitions to become chief constable. Her career now over, after she exposed a culture of misogyny and racism within West Midlands Police. We shouldn't be having officers who post pornographic images of females, labia and clitorises. How, how are women going to be respected? In an exclusive interview, she tells us how the schoolgirl Malala Yousafzai was given a racist nickname by the officers meant to be protecting her. She was referred to on a couple of occasions as Tikka Masala, as a nickname. That's wrong. Firearms is seen as an elite unit within policing. The West Mids team were filmed in a training session for this documentary. For the first time, Ms Callum reveals what it was really like when the cameras weren't recording. You are at the high-end criminality of um, policing, whether that be a terrorist attack, whether it be somebody who's in possession of a gun in the street. What was it like for you as a woman of colour going into that environment? I think as a woman it's hard. There were six females when I joined the department and you know, pretty much the majority were male officers, 235 males from my memory, um, that went up to around 260. I was always looked at the lesser sex because I was female. I was told I only got into the unit because I was brown. Did I have direct racism said to my face? Not really. Does it exist? Absolutely. What was the culture like within the firearms unit? It's a culture that's insular where you've got pockets of quite horrific misogyny with sexism, with racism. Is there a feeling amongst some officers that they are untouchable? Absolutely. It's very, very difficult because you've got some really fabulous officers there who are there to do the right thing and to serve the communities. And then you've got the ones who, unfortunately, in my opinion, shouldn't hold a warrant card. During a decade on the unit, she claims one former colleague exposed himself to her. Another tried to grab her by the crotch. She had to strip down to her underwear in front of male officers during a training exercise. And, as an ethnic minority, was told that she'd have to be the poster girl for the unit. Miss Callum was horrified when she learnt that some firearms officers were sharing posts on social media that were pornographic, racist and homophobic. Now we've seen some of these messages and many of them are just too offensive to show. They include pictures of semi-naked women holding guns, some with their legs spread eagled. There are caricatures of black people, including one that's supposed to be an offender with huge lips. And there's a highly sexualized cartoon of a Muslim woman. She's wearing a hijab, her breasts are prominent, and she's serving alcohol to a firearms officer. And yet, when Ms Callum complained, Initially, her concerns were dismissed. She was told it was just a bit of banter. There was some really horrific things put on the Facebook group. And Professional Standards Department and PSD chose not to take those as criminal investigations and instead allowed officers to delete that Facebook page and delete the content from that Facebook page. The force told us there's no place for misogynistic, discriminatory or disrespectful behaviour in policing and it's working hard to reinforce the highest standards. It told the tribunal it had assessed the content but found no criminal offences. Eventually, 16 officers and staff were given low-level sanctions and advice about their conduct. Ms Callum claims that if it had been investigated properly, around 100 officers would have been scrutinised. And that would have been a third or, you know, nearly half of all of the officers of the firearms unit if they were investigated. That's correct. Then you would have had West Midlands Police and Special Measures because a third of the firearms unit then would have been under investigation and may have had to be moved off 
into different roles whilst that investigation continued. Ms Callum argues that the culture went all the way to the very top. Yeah, the one, the one I can't tell what he said when he comes to the exact meetings. No, we can reveal that among the 16 was the then Chief Constable Sir David Thompson. He was required to review his practice over this leaving video obtained by Channel 4 News. It was one of a series for an officer of Irish descent which referred to potato farmers, caravans and Irish travellers trying to break into a car. At the time of the investigation, Sir David was the National Police Chief's lead on race. He told us his involvement in the video was reviewed by the Police and Crime Commissioner and that no further action was deemed necessary. When she tried to challenge racist behaviour, including language used by some police officers to describe Malala, Ms Callum claims she was victimised. She was referred to on a couple of occasions as Tikka Masala. When the terrorist attacks happened and either Muslim um, officers or the Muslim community or even the Sikh community because some officers unfortunately are not well versed in the difference between um, cultures, they would be labelled as because they wear a turban. And no matter how much you challenge it, you know, because you've stood up and you shouldn't have stood up and they victimise you in some kind of way or make it difficult for you on the unit. Ms Callum took her employer to a tribunal claiming sex discrimination, harassment and victimisation. She won her case, the force accepting a total of 75 allegations. She may be in line for a record payout. West Midlands Police told us they wouldn't comment whilst awaiting the tribunal's decision on compensation. Get on the floor! Another substantial part of her claim centred on the lack of body armour for women who were told that their out-of-date kit wouldn't be replaced and that they'd have to make do with men's ballistic armour. When she complained, she was told to wear a compression bra. Male, unformed, straight body armour which doesn't give space for female anatomy. The majority of females, I think, complained about how uncomfortable it was, went to occupational health, suffered with back pain, couldn't breastfeed. When we continued to raise the issue, it just was never, ever sorted, never, never bought for us. So how did you feel when you were going out on jobs, wearing uniform that you felt wouldn't protect you? What I felt was unsafe, knowing that I might not come home to my two kids if I was shot. That's scary. West Midlands Police told us that all female firearms officers now have the ballistic kit that they need. Since Ms Callum's complaint, they say they've worked hard to deliver improvements. And yet, Channel 4 News has been told that some within the firearms unit still deny the need for change and that former colleagues question Ms Callum's motives. Some officers have accused you of only bringing this case for the money. That hurts because those friends, those officers, those colleagues who know me know that it was never about that. All this has ever been out about for me is two things. One, to provide that PPE. The second reason I did it was because of cultural change. I could see that escalation of behaviour. If someone wasn't going to stand up and do something about it, it would just continue and it proliferates and it infects every person in that unit. There are some shocking examples of what Ms Callum says is evidence of a toxic masculine culture. She says that firearms officers who are on duty in the evening would come here to the city centre. They would rate women who are on a night out and they would call this pussy patrol. When they sit outside gorgling at females, young females, commenting on which ones they would like to hit, shag, you know, sleep with, it's wrong. We should be trusting those officers to protect them. If that was your daughter and you knew firearms officers were doing that, I know I'd be concerned if I had a daughter. Earlier this year, we revealed that a firearms officer had had sex with two women separately at a Christmas party here at the NEC. It's claimed that he filmed the acts without their consent and then shared the footage with colleagues. 
He's now being investigated for misconduct, but he was only suspended after our report was broadcast. Miss Callum has a chilling warning about the potential escalation of unchallenged, toxic behaviour. It's something the Casey review of the Metropolitan Police recently highlighted, following a number of horrific, high-profile cases involving serving officers. West Midlands Police need to take a serious stock of what's happening within that unit, because I can only speak from experience, and there are people who shouldn't be there, and there are predators within that unit. My worst fear is that we will end up with another David Carrick, another Wayne Cousins, and that's the reason why I'm doing this today. It's the reason why I've stood up for the last two and a half years. The reason why I've lost my career, because it's the right thing to do. Darshana Sonny with that exclusive report. And Darshana joins me now from outside West Midlands Police Headquarters. Darshana, what's the latest on this? Well, Rebecca Callum has given us a rare insight into what's often described as an elite, untouchable unit. West Midlands Police have told us that firearms is under new management. They say they've made positive changes. All women firearms officers have now been given body armour. And crucially, they say, they've been working tirelessly to deliver improvements to culture. And that matters because in recent times across the country, police culture has been under scrutiny. Forces rely on policing by consent. They know they need the trust of the communities they serve. In Birmingham, there are large Muslim and black populations, and they need to know that if they ever have to call on the police, or if the police ever have to call on them, that they'll be treated with dignity and respect. Women need to know the same thing. West Midlands Police will be well aware of this, and tonight they told us they're working hard to set and reinforce the highest standards. Darshan, thanks very much. Well, a short time ago, I spoke to Tony Burnett, who was the head of diversity and inclusion for West Mid Midlands Police between 2018 and 2021, and he's now in charge of the anti-racism charity Kick It Out. I asked him for his response to what he heard in our interview with Rebecca Callum. I think it's awful. The first thing I want to say is I take my hat off to uh, Officer Callum because to to get to the stage she's got in this case takes a huge amount of bravery. The, the system is set up to attack whistleblowers, so to get to where she's got to is huge. But what she's outlined is not new news. And I go so far as to say is I think uh, policing for me is stuck in this vicious cycle of stupidity where this stuff keeps happening, the solutions that are put in place are not appropriate to fix the problem, then we get back into the same cycle of stupidity once again. You sound frustrated. Is that born out of your experience within the organisation? Did you face similar allegations to those we've seen uh, from Rebecca. And how did you, what was your experience of trying to get management to deal with it? I've seen many instances. Uh, Rebecca's case is obviously a, a particularly horrific case, but I've seen many instances of, of similar issues that the force and, uh, and forces have failed to deal with appropriately. And the challenges are numerous. I mean, firstly, from a leadership perspective, there are 40 odd, 40 plus chief constables uh, in, in English forces, and they've all essentially got their own fiefdoms. So the extent to which they take this issue seriously is down to the chief constable's personal view. And just on that point, in this case, among the 16 officers investigated over racist and sexist social media was the then chief constable, Sir David Thompson. Um, so the problem goes right to the top. And that's not a surprise. So if you look at the, the nature of policing, this is one of the biggest challenges I found. People join and stay for 35 years. And actually, the vast majority of the time, their whole career is spent in policing. And therefore, they have no norms, no norms of behaviour that are set from any other walk of work in life. Just looking at some of the specific allegations that Rebecca Callum has made, derogatory comments about Muslims, Malala Yousafzai called chicken tikka masala by officers on several occasions. Why do you think management didn't tackle that? Because I think, again, policing is insular, and I think policing re replicates its own culture. And what, one of the challenges, again, I've got with, with the 40-odd chief constables, they join as PCs, they progress through a culture that we know is inappropriate, and then they get to a level where they are then setting the culture for their particular force. And so you need new recruits, you need you outsiders coming in. You need new in. recruits, and, and then you've got a further challenge, which is the professional standards department, which is supposed to hold police officers and leaders to account, 
it's an internal department, so it re reports into the chief constable. If the chief constable's got any question marks about reputational risk, or actually if there's an allegation of inappropriate behaviour against the chief constable, how is that dealt with if the chief constable is the ultimate arbiter of justice? It, it just doesn't make sense at all. West Midlands Police Deputy Chief Constable Scott Green told us that under the leadership of Chief Superintendent Sarah Burton, officers and staff in the firearms unit have worked hard over the past two years to deliver improvements to culture, standards and the work environment. So they seem to be clear that progress is being made. I'll go back to uh, 30 years ago. Um, 30 years ago, following Stephen Lawrence, you know, the police made statements about they were really clear that progress had been made on race. Um, how many times have we been in a situation, a laminar review into criminal justice system, really clear about standards of change and, and people have made progress. The recent stuff that's come up with the Met, really clear about progress being made and loads of fantastic statements about driving change. The problem is the change and the expectation of driving that change is in the hands of police officers who've proved over many years that they're incapable of changing themselves. That is the nub of the problem. Just finally, you've said that you believe one of the answers is getting new recruits in, new blood into the police. Um, how difficult is it to do that, given all the very well-publicised problems? You know, what woman, what person from uh, an ethnic minority background will want to join the police and try and progress up through the ranks? Uh, that's a great question, C completely. And, and, you know, there's a, there's a bigger danger for me, actually, which is... The police in this country, and there are lots of good police, so let's, let's be really clear about that, the vast majority are good officers, but the police can uh, police by consent. That requires legitimacy. If police can't even police themselves appropriately, then what right have they got to police our communities? And so this, for me, is a, is a hugely serious problem that needs external intervention. I do not trust the police service and the police force to police its own behaviours and set the standards that we as society expect of them. If you dialed 999, would you hesitate to trust the police to deal with your complaint properly? I'd be very hesitant to dial 999. Even though you've worked for the police yourself? I'd be yourself. very hesitant to dial 999, absolutely. Tony Burnett, thank you very much.